as we enter this space of shared time and some meditation. As we have sung our prayers, sending our love and our joy and our peace over the mountains, over the sea, into the heavens. Feel that return to you now. And wherever you are, feel yourself supported, grounded and rooted in the blessing of Mother Earth. Sending love and joy and peace out into Father Sky. Centering in on O oh, Birther, Mother, Father, Creator of the Cosmos, Creator of all in the Cosmos. Creator who taught the mud to dream. Breathing in, I am rooted. Breathing out, I lift my face to the sun and rain. Breathing in, my roots grow deep. Breathing out, my being expands. Rooted. Expansive. There is only one presence and one power in my life and in the universe.
the power that made the word incarnate. The all-loving presence that we are. And so it is. Amen. Thank you for your presence, for bringing us together into that presence. <clears throat> so I'd like to invite you to imagine another presence. As I said, I had the incredible, delightful gift of being steeped in the magic of seeing the world through 20-month-old eyes. <clears throat> their delight in each other, their delight in being outside and running around with the dogs. They didn't care if they landed laying down, looking up at the sky in anything that was muddy, <laughs> it didn't matter. There was just delight. And I think about myself as a kid. Back in the day when we lived in Rochester on a city street where we knew almost everybody in the neighborhood, outside meant running through backyards that were mostly unencumbered by fences. It was that kind of classic, the, a mom, some mom would, you know, call us back, all right, it's time to go home, it's time for dinner. But we played outside. We had all kinds of games that we played outside. And then childhood got a little bit more boxed in. But I remember that delight of running with friends. And I remember what it was like to have a favorite tree when we moved to this little tiny town in Columbia County where I didn't have that neighborhood of friends to run around with. But I would bring a book, mostly to get away from the younger siblings, but to bring a book and climb up into this favorite tree and just escape into the tree, but held. And I hadn't thought of that for a long time. And then yesterday as we, Jenny and my sister Jenny and I took the two kids to this little park in Westfield to see the ducks. And you know, 20, month, 20 months old is an interesting thing because they're 10 days apart, but their development runs the span of child, early childhood development. I know, I should have brought Carol with me, <laughs> who's an expert in the field. So Keely, who is you know, 10 days older, is a beansy little thing, and she's, she's very much into movement. Not that, he, not that Eli isn't, but he's also, at, at his 20 months, he's a little bit more vocal. One of his first words was sky. So when we were all together at Christmas time, Keely taught Eli how to dance. <laughs> and Eli kept saying, the sky the sky. So yesterday at that park, we looked at the cloudy sky, we fed the ducks, we looked at the ducks, we looked at the ducks some more, and we walked along this little wooden path to where there's a gentle waterfall. And I don't know when the last time you were with somebody who's 20 months old, but sort of when they get an idea in their heads. <laughs> As a grandma, I just was like, well, I'm just going to go for it in ways I didn't always feel like I could when it was my 20-month-old. <laughs> so when Eli, who loved the sound of that waterfall, went back to find Keely to show her the waterfall, we just hung out there. And they don't have a lot of language, but it didn't matter because there was magic happening in that experience of seeing the waterfall 
listening to the waterfall, of falling in love with this waterfall. It wasn't Niagara Falls. It was a tiny little stream that kind of rushes down over some layers of rocks and goes out into a pond that was kind of gross looking. <laughs> <laughs> From my adult eyes, they didn't care that it was weedy, that they, were, they could see these big koi fish in there. There was a mama fish. You know, they both have the word mama and daddy and bibi. But there was a mama fish. It, there was just magic. Everything about that, because Jenny and I were able to step into their magic with them in ways that we actually talked about after they were in bed, we didn't always have that energy when we were the mamas. And so I know it's a privilege to be a mother, to recognize the gift that my mothering gave to my kids who are now parents. And not everybody has that privilege. But we have the gift, if we open up to it, of seeing the world with beginner's eyes with new eyes. That's the whole call, I think, of the resurrection story, of that universal pattern that I talked about last week, of renewal, of spring, of seeing with new eyes, whether our eyes are 60 years old and really need strong glasses, or they're 20 months old, and see just the magic of the natural world. It's, it's almost a shame that we have to have something called Earth Day because we, in our civilized world, especially in the Western world, have this sense of separation from creation. That is not how most of the world, through time, saw the natural world. Our ancestors the people whose land we are on now, my Celtic ancestors saw all of creation as sacred. And we are just a part of that. So I'm going to, I brought lots of show and tell. <laughs> I'm not going to read everything from all of these, I promise. But I have been really curious in this year about two things. The idea of pilgrimage. What does it mean to be a pilgrimage on a journey? Peregrination is seeing our lives as a journey into the sacred. So I've got, I'm going to just, honestly, I'm going to leave these here if you're interested and curious after the service. They'll be on a chair. You can take a look. Earth, our original monastery. Church of the Wild, how nature invites us into the sacred. Sacred Earth, Sacred Soul by John Philip Newell, who for many years was an abbot with his wife, Anna Iona, which I am privileged to be able to go there this summer on pilgrimage. Our friend star Regan DiCiccio, Divine Sparks, has a chapter on falling in love with the earth. And then I have this little book, Earth Prayers, Life Prayers, that has a, a section about our kinship with all of everything. So I'm going to set these here. Show and tell time is over for now. And I'm going to read a little bit from Sacred Earth, Sacred Soul. The Celtic spiritual tradition is one that has long emphasized an awareness of the sacred essence of all things. This tradition is, in fact, part of our Western Christian inheritance, although it has been largely forgotten and at times suppressed. It is a way of seeing, a path of awareness that can be traced through the centuries forever unfolding evolving, emerging again and again. 
And so again, that points to that universal pattern of renewal, of resurrection, of the always unfolding, and our place in that. From that little book, Life Prayers, there is a longing in us to return to our native place, to meet once again with our kin in the earth community. We are called home to a wider world of life, of wilderness and spontaneity, the world of wind and rain, of oak and maple and pineland forest, of the eagle and the chickadee, the wolf and the bear, and the many other beings all our relations with whom we share this earth. But we need a day to celebrate Earth Day, to remember because of the widespread destruction that we as humans have had by our buying, by our making, by our throwing away in ways that don't show stewardship for this precious, precious one gift that we have. There's no planet B. I didn't make that up. I wish I did. <laughs> but there is no planet B. This is it. So in these changing times, when we see around us the destruction, it can feel overwhelming to think, how am I going to make a difference? And like everything, we do our one small part and we do another small part and we do another small part and we do some research. Are there ways that we in our own homes, in our own lives, in our businesses can be better stewards? That's part of the stewardship of this building is making sure that we are not misusing resources, that we are keeping this beautiful building standing and standing well. There's something about the difference between kinship with and dominion over that Western thought has missed. I have a very dear, dear friend whose thinking has very much changed over time, but Early on, when I was discovering the concept of non-duality, we had a conversation and he said, I am I. The mountain is the mountain. And I said, yes, and we are made of the same stuff. If you dig down deep enough, all of us are made of the same stardust. And that piece of how we forget how we forget the sky, the sky, Bibi, the sky, the tree, Keely, come, waterfall, more waterfall. We forget that magic that we are, but that the whole of creation is. And so we're here as both remembrance and call to each other. That is the gift of community, of remembering like the aspen trees that look like an aspen forest is all individual trees. They're just shoots of one big root system. Did you know that? I just learned this. Holy wow. I actually thought of getting a picture of aspen trees to, to let us visualize that. So again, go, go to the Google. And, and, and Google aspen trees, what a symbol of all of creation that we see in our limited sight, I am I, and the mountain is the mountain. But we are not here for dominion over all that the creator of the cosmos has given us. We are here for kinship with. And that is a revolutionary stance in the world. That is the stance of a 20-month-old falling in love with a waterfall. 
we can take that in. We can fall in love. Jerry and I both were puddle jumpers today. Mine are in my office. Maybe go out today on this rainy day and jump in a puddle. Maybe remember one of those childhood places that you fell in love with. And think about what that place looks like today. Plant a plant in your yard or bring in a house plant in, or not. You don't want to kill them either. But <laughs> find some green life. Look out your window. Fall in love with some little snippet of this beautiful world. And let that waterfall of the Creator invite you into more fully embracing your kinship with all that is. I'm going to end with a poem prayer as I often love to do. This is by Joy Harjo. And it seemed so perfect to tie in to our daily word of prayer and what that means. But as we celebrate that kinship, I invite you to hear these words as our prayer today. To pray, you open your whole self to sky, sky, to earth, to sun, to moon, to one whole voice that is you. And know there is more that you can't see, can't hear, can't know except in moments steadily growing and in languages that aren't always sound, but other circles of motion, like eagle that Sunday morning over Salt River, circled in blue sky and wind, swept our hearts clean with sacred wings. We see you, see ourselves and know that we must take the utmost care and kindness in all things. Breathe in knowing we are made of all this. And breathe knowing we are truly blessed because we were born and die soon within a true circle of motion like eagle rounding out the morning inside us. We pray that it will be done in beauty, in beauty. And so it is. Amen. <laughs>